My content is for 13 and up or adult collectors of the product. Hello everyone. Uh, before we continue, I want to mention that we have a store where we have a pre-order for Gatling Dragon. We also have Chain Kerbeus, uh, other random booster stuff. Uh, if you're interested in Gatling Dragon, check it out, uh, our shop. And with that being said, we're going to continue with the news breakdown. Uh, subscribe to the channel with bell notifications on. So as per usual, I uh, have Insomnia at this point, and Takara told me to release the Gatling video. So we get a proper look at uh, D-Gear and Gatling. Uh, and honestly, uh, some things I like a lot, some things uh, we'll get to, and you will hear my honest thoughts. Uh, the one I'm the least favorite about is probably just the fact that we get Karma, right? 10, whatever. Karma, not a fan. And I uh, charge metal dash, don't really care. But uh, we're, we're gonna get started. So, to really show off Gatling, we're gonna first start off with the core. And the core is looking pretty good. There are a few differences from Valkyrie 1 that we'll get over with, but uh, I am pleased to see how they actually uh, executed it. And it does seem like uh, we can finally throw Valkyrie 1 in the bin, <laughs> so that's good. Uh, they show the side-by-side, -side, and I gotta say, Gatling looks thick. I do think that this will probably be our first, like, solid BU release for the Blade and the Core. So, very excited to see that. And, uh, Charge Metal Dash, I don't think this driver will be good. Funny driver... That's about it for my thoughts. I don't think it'll be that effective in the DB attack in DB or BU attack meta. Uh, they show a look at the teeth. The teeth do not look stubby, which is basically the thing that we are looking for to make sure. Doesn't seem as bad as Valkyrie one. It has three teeth on each side, right? And uh, very very excited to see it and uh, happy, very happy because it really it needs to be better than Valkyrie 1 so at least we got that kind of checked off from what we're able to see from the actual video so very very content with that uh, afterwards they do show the spring so it is a little bit different so the spring for how it works for the bound I believe it's supposed to meet like halfway or whatever than uh, Valkyrie 1 now the reason for this is they have to compensate for the actual teeth I do think this core, if you are wondering, no, not for attack. I do think very effective for stamina slash defense, just like Valkyrie 1. It seems like a waste to use a core like that for attack when there are other cores that you can use when this is very clearly just should, should just be for stamina slash defense. But, um... Yeah, I want to just mention that because the whole thing with bound attacks like this illusion thing, stamina and defense, yes. But uh, overall, what I do appreciate is that we can finally have something where if I slap a dash driver on it, I, I can have it last more than one tournament. <laughs> Obviously, we still have to, you know, wait and see it in hand, so let me make sure I'm not trying to gas it up too much, uh, whatever. But I just have a lot of visceral hatred towards Valkyrie 1, so I... I may be a little crazy. <laughs> may be a little crazy. Uh, but moving on uh, from there, we get to the next section, which is very interesting, which is what I basically mentioned with the whole thing with uh, Savior. So I don't really know what I'm wondering is how strong the spring compression is compared to the gold Valkyrie 1. Surprise, surprise. The reason why the gold Valkyrie 1 is the best version is because it takes a lot of force to push it, so it has very good stamina slash defense. It's very resistant. It doesn't go as crazy as, let's say, the original one, but that's a good thing, right? The more force that it takes to actually push and click, the better it is, because it takes a lot to burst it. Is it invincible? No, but that's why it's useful. And what I do think is um, this could be very good uh, if you have Dynamite F gear and maybe you want to have... What else would you even use Valkyrie 1 for? I think Valkyrie 1 is just really Dynamite F gear. I'm trying to think, to be honest. Uh, wow, we really don't have that many options. There's Dynamite F gear. I can't say Devil. If this was like a deck of base. I could say... Uh, no, no, no. I could definitely say... Right, Astral. So if you wanted to have Dragon and Valkyrie 1, you know, you could have Dynamite FK and Right Astral, I guess. 
it, I guess. Really, I just say this more as an emplacement for Valkyrie 1. Which, I mean, honestly, these are probably talking points you're already going to hear me say when I eventually uh, review this in the many weeks. I have to wait till this uh, comes out. But, um, what's interesting now is actually how the gimmick works. So, that little dragon thing that pops out, um, they have a little graphic for how it works and everything, but, um, basically the mode changes for how this works. And a big shout out to Mo from the WBO, Big Up WBO, by the way, for help, uh, for this video. The, the two modes is slash mode, where it's not activated in that state, and the continuous, like, attack mode, right? Okay, so basically what happens is if both the dragons are pushed in, and you see where they're pushing with their finger, you get to continuous attack mode, where the little things are pushed out, and you can uh, slide with your hits. So, I also have to mention that, uh, golly gosh, that looks pretty cool. So, basically, it just has this giant ovalish shape. Not really like oval oval, but you know what I mean. Like, still, I don't know if you're allowed to have it to where you can just choose between both those states. Which, if you can, that'll be cool. If not, whatever. But... I think it's kind of interesting. They do call it modes, but I don't know if, like, in the sense that, uh, you can just have it where it's continuous attack and then, or whatever, but, I mean, for battles, that'll be interesting. I do wonder how much the stamina will be like in continuous attack, because, um, Tempest, when it was, like, fully out, was not that good. But if this thing hits aggressive or whatever, dude, that's gonna be sick. Gatling, at the very least, I'm, I'm not too much on maybe attack, but Stamina Slash defense is looking pretty, like, interesting. It has a lot of good stuff going for it, the core, the thing, and I'm very happy this is not a Tempest clone. It is very much not. It is very, f like, visually you can maybe say kind of looks like Tempest, but there's so many, like, tiny differences to where it's not really a clone. It really isn't. I mean, design, I guess. If you want to say, like, design, we can look at it. But, like, for performance and all that stuff, really not. And I guess all those, like, shapes. I mean, not really. So these are the two states of the modes. Now, what I'm very curious for is spin equalization, right? What's going to be the difference between slash mode and continuous attack? Now, I don't really think those things are actually supposed to be pushed out. They're just showing that as the example. I think what they mean is maybe if you're in that state and you launch hard, it's supposed to be, like, outwards but maybe near the end it's kind of not i don't know actually you want to know what no wait no because it has to be i'm pretty sure to be honest it is very hard to talk about this without having it in my hand so you're gonna have to forgive me on this one okay so regardless i do think probably the slash mode is probably gonna be better than the other one for equalization most likely it's not really round like, it's kind of got a circling and overly shape, but it is very, jag so it is very, like, attack, right? Because, like, Tempest was, like, other than the, the, the ultimate awakening mode, whatever it's called, right? Like, the first one was pr pretty round. This one is, like, they, they actually are like, okay, wait, we got to make it an attack type. Of course, I do love Imperial, and I do wish it was more taken from Imperial, but I'll take what I can get. Uh, moving on from there, so I'm not taking up all this time just uh, talking on points if we already finished it. The next part I want to talk about is high mode. So high mode, I believe it should be locked in slash, not in the other way. Yeah, because the head is closed in. So for high mode, you are locked that way, I'm pretty sure, because the armor is closed on the thing. Now, as far as my thoughts go, uh... I mean, for high mode, that should be fine. It's, I mean, I guess that'll be fine. I guess, I feel like, equalization stuff, or, I mean, you know, high mode's not even bad, same spin, to be honest. I think the more and more I see high mode, I don't really dislike it. You know, that, that might be interesting. It might be pretty interesting to see. I, I really am curious for combinations. What's going to be, like, the best? Is it going to be zone dash Z? Uh, is it going to be high extend plus dash? Bearing dash, you know, for, like, stamina slash defense. After for attack, we see. And to be honest... I, I'm a little nervous for this because there's a lot of testing that I have to do with this to really find out. I don't expect this stock to be insane. I don't expect this stock to be something crazy, so... 
I think probably for a lot of combinations, yes. It's just the reason why I say this because like DB attack stuff needs these rubber stuff to be fast and aggressive to be consistently good. That's why I'm not the biggest fan of non-rubber attack for DB slash BU. I'm sure you can use it and maybe get some results, but it's got to really depend. Uh, the other thing I also want to say is that, yes, the, uh, there's no armor stickers. Uh, it still kind of annoys me. I would have been cool if it did, like, a different color sticker, like red, blue, purple, whatever, green, for the armor stickers. That would have been cool. Okay, so now we get into D-Gear. So D-Gear is really strange. It reminds me of Chris Cygnus. So, they have a little stopper on the inside. And by the way, I, I remember talking uh, to someone, I forget who, they pointed this out, but... How it works is basically it goes sliding from side to side, so for those that wanted the little special gimmick for the D-Gear, there you go. It goes side to side. I guess it's to emulate quote-unquote bound. Uh, my thoughts on it is that I would have liked it to be just normal and fixed. Uh, I don't know how good it's going to be like that. For attack stuff, let's see, you know, maybe if it's heavier than S-Gear, that could be interesting. I'm curious on, uh, because S-Gear, Nexus Plus S really paired up nicely with Mobius. Hopefully, uh, it's useful. I'm not, like, too crazy on D-Gear, but again, you know, let's wait until we have it in hand to really judge. They also do a battle with Astral Spriggan. And in this battle, what do you, who do you think wins? The... The new release or the old one? Obviously the new release, so pocket it. So my overall thoughts on Gatling Dragon. I think it's got a lot of good stuff going for it. I don't really think there's anything that could be potentially holding this back in terms of the core and the blade. It does seem like it's got a lot of good stuff uh, going for it. And we at least know one thing for sure. If Chain was heavy, and you could have occasions where Chain could potentially overpower Dynamite plus F, even though Chain is not the craziest overall, then I want to see what happens when you get something like this. Uh, that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I tried to be fair for criticism. I didn't like the Karma, 10, uh, Charge Metal Dash, whatever. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, we also have a store optional way to support the channel like i already mentioned at the start uh thank you for watching we also did a review on astral surprising make sure to check out that video and thank you for watching and hope you all have an amazing day